What's up, guys? It's Gardy B with the Jenkins and Jones show. As always, I'm here with my good internet buddies, Dragonfly Jones, a.k.a. Tyler. What's up, guys? With Jethro Jenkins, a.k.a. John. What's up, Bubba's? And if you fuck with us, you want to see more of our content, please jump on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. So tell us about just the what the reaction's been like for you. I mean, I feel like you um, your story dropped, I think it was Saturday, and then, I mean, we're, we're five days later, and the only thing anyone is talking about with the NBA at this point still is COVID-19, <laughs> you know, vaccines and anti-vaxxers. So what's the last couple of days been like for you? What's the I mean, it's been, been like? a little overwhelming. I, I'm not sure the, re- the reaction surprises me, though, right? Because this is the predominant urgent crisis of our time. And, and, you know, I spent a lot of time with my book exploring activism and social justice as that has run the course of the last 10 years in the NBA. And here's like the pandemic, right? I mean, how were we not going to talk about the pandemic? And I, so I didn't go into writing this with any agenda. I just kind of saw Kyrie posting on the gram about, you know, being at some reservation. I was like, why is this dude wearing a mask? And I just started asking around and asking questions. People wanted to talk to me about this. Players wanted to talk to me. I mean, some guys didn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole, but I was like, okay, this is going to be a thing. This is like, this is important. This is the most important thing. Um, and so I thought it was going to take like three weeks to write this story. And my editor is like, no, 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 no. We got to get out ahead of media day, like get this on the agenda. And so it was interesting. I mean, Kyrie's Kyrie. And, and I think he he will be a real acid test, um, trippy as he is, uh, of, of where this goes. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been I've been getting a lot of anti-vaxxers up in my DMs. I've, I've definitely had to tweak the notifications a little. So maybe the algorithms <laughs> are working for the better. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, man, appreciate you hopping on with us. So, um, you know, in, in the article, um, you know, it's mentioned how only about, you know, 10% of the league is unvaccinated, but but yet, you know, the players union w- w- is caving on just about all of their demands. And that's interesting to me because, you know, it's no secret that the players union is a place where, you know, the big dogs call the shots. You know, it's not necessarily a place where everyone has an, an equal voice. Like, it's no secret that, you know, the players union puts the big dogs first and everyone else has to get in where they're fitting. You don't see Supermax guys caving into like, you know, the veteran minimum guys on any other issues. But in this situation where the unbacks are the extreme minority, they caved in on a lot of demands. And I'm curious, why do you think that is? You have any insight onto that? I mean, are the unvaxxed the extreme minority? I think the folks who are currently unvaxxed are the extreme minority. I mean, LeBron was very equivocal when he was, you know, at that party with Drake and Michael B and Clutch back in May. You'll remember that Giannis's brother tested or was in the COVID protocols at like game five in the finals. You're telling me that that's not a close contact of the biggest superstar of the moment. I'm not. I'm not suggesting anything nefarious, but I, you know, the, the biggest superstars were possibly unvaccinated heading into the summer, and so I think this vocal minority. While, while there are the kind of extremists who look at weird shit on Instagram, that is pretty out there. I, I think any strong union would say, okay, we can't set a precedent for forcing the employer management to put shit in the employee's body. So like that kind of makes sense from a straight like labor perspective. Um, But yeah, I mean, this is a hardcore stance by the union, which has only been emboldened over the last couple of years of, you know, player empowerment coming to the crux of the bubble and all that. Um, So it doesn't like totally surprise me, but the league is, you know, talking to league sources, they're pretty pissed off. They're, they're like, they're not budging on this and this could get bad. And so that's kind of the excuse that the league keeps giving about why there are more pro- protocols and, and crackdowns. And, you know, the, the league did finally come out with um, its kind of almost final uh, rules for COVID uh, late on, on Tuesday night. And, you know, just reading through like all 65 pages of them, like it's pretty hardcore on the unvaccinated. You're not going to have fun. You're not going to have any, uh, friends over to your hotel room on the road that's for well and uh, you you mentioned the league being pissed off and sort of hardlining and they i think they just this morning announced that um if you you know the andrew wiggins situation if you're not playing in a home game um because you're not meeting your your team's city's um health department's guidelines you are not going to be paid (laughs) and so i it's like there that's that's a, a pretty big piece of that puzzle i think that is it's like, once is you, once it? i you... mean i mean first of all i think draymond and iggy are gonna just fucking yell at uh wiggins and <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure he's running the shots there but you gotta realize like Kyrie has nike money right like he doesn't 
really care about game checks, even if it's 800 K a night. I mean, this dude skipped seven games in a row in January for what sources told me at the time was a quote, spiritual, mental, and emotional break. Right. I mean, that was precipitate precipitated by the Capitol riot, which did not make anybody happy, but you know, he stands for his principles. But, 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 but do you think Kyrie is leading a group or it, I, I mean, I see him more so as uh, sort of an island unto himself a little bit. You think he's leading a group of people? This most people don't have Kyrie's Nike money. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not sure. I, I think a lot of guys in the league look to Kyrie to embody some of their instincts. You know, I think when he was leading this pseudo, almost kind of boycott that failed of, of the bubble, he was speaking for that unvocal minority and he failed, right? He failed to unite and and lead this kind of coalition of the unwilling. Uh, I think he's on Kyrie Island for sure. And, and, you know, he wants to lead what he calls his tribe off the court. Um, I don't know. Is it going to be a really good look if he is really taking this stand all the way and being kind of this freedom fighter for the opposite of science? I, I don't know. I mean, it's a <laughs> lot's going to ride on KD, like guilt tripping him into doing this. I, I, I don't know. It's He says there's a plan that will be revealed in due time. I, I don't know if the Nets are aware of any such plan, but um, oh, man, what a shit show. <laughs> what What do you think? What do you think, like, as far as how, do you think, like, because Kyrie won't just be missing games in New York. There's other places, like, he won't be able to play in, uh, in, 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 in Cali and stuff like that. So, He'll miss like upwards of like 50 games. Do you see like him not getting the vax and missing 50 fucking games of the season? Like, will one side cave? Like, what what are you thinking? I mean, look, like the whole leak of, you know, if I get traded, I'm going to retire. You know, it's, it's just kind of making a point, right? Like he said on KD's podcast um, that... I could see myself retiring early and heading off into the the desert one day, growing out my fro and throwing on like a cape or whatever. And like, I think these are. I can see that too, (laughs) for sure. I mean, but it's just kind of this imaginative (laughs) possibility. Like, look how much power I have that I could do this. I I, I definitely don't see him fucking over his teammates like that after they've had all this stop and start with KD's injury, and then last season the toe on the line away from going to the finals. So. No, I don't see him riding it all the way out, but maybe just enough to to prove a point until Joe Sy gets mad and the the Nets owner and Steve Nash is just kind of like, I okay, I can't keep like kind of resting you. Um, so I don't know. The, the Nets like to kind of shuffle in and out and mix up their rotations a ton anyway, but um, I, I think there's only so long that the gambit can go on before he caves. I think you know sources indicate to me that like he just thought that somebody else would cave, right? And I think if anything, it looks like the forces are swelling that the PA might have to kind of like not let him be the ultimate example here because he's just, I don't know. I'm not sure he's the right avatar for for the fight that the PA is trying to fight here. For sure, for sure. Um, so, so in the article, you know, you mentioned how Kyrie had followed this account on Instagram. <laughs> there's some real crazy shit about like, about how there's this conspiracy to, to to upload, you know, black people's information to the cloud for Satan or some shit. And you also mentioned that, you know, it's not only just Kyrie's following on Instagram that that this, you know, Moderna microchip misinformation campaign, as you call it, has spread through, you know, NBA players, group chats and shit. I want to get into the crazy on that. Like, how deep is the motherfucking Satan Google's doc conspiracy going on amongst NBA players right now? I, I mean, it, when I was spending like... <laughs> a year and a half like embedded in the league and, and, you know, guys were telling me kind of not to be quoted about group chats and team group chats and links that they're throwing in there. And there's like weird shit, right? I mean, you're talking about Mm -hmm. 20 to 35 year old men who uh, maybe don't trust the system for various reasons, maybe go down Instagram and YouTube rabbit holes like Kyrie has admitted he did with the flat earther thing. Um, you know, the, the thing about the lives of the rich and famous in the NBA, like they're just kind of sitting around the hotel room staring at their fucking phone all the time. Like K- KD gets all this mm-hmm. shit because that's what he does. I'm not saying he's some yeah. uh, conspiracy theorist, but, you know, I, I think it's the same stuff that a lot of people are seeing in, in the age of misinformation. Um, you know, I want to be clear that like Kyrie definitely started following this kind of nutcase conspiracy theorist and liking like posts that wasn't this particular mind control post, but Mm. I did hear from, you know, about locker rooms from players saying that this had 
made its way through multiple locker rooms, which, you know, I, I keep coming back to this part of my book where like, it's, it's kind of introducing early on the, the Kyrie conspiracy, the Kyrie flat earther thing. And then I talked to Instagram and they're like, yeah, he has more engagement on, on IG than Trump does or did when he was still out on there. And then I'm talking to the head of Instagram and like the next paragraph. And he's like, it's actually good for, you know, our, our, our public figures to disagree on things. And, and, you know, that, that contrarianism is good. And then fans of all ages will gravitate toward people they find authentic and that means something to them. And I was like, okay. And then like the next paragraph, I'm talking to like the seventh grade star of Kyrie's old middle school basketball team. And this kid is like, yeah, I love everything Kyrie posts, even the really weird stuff. And so like, it's just this cycle of like misinformation and leadership and influence that like I've been thinking a lot about. And now that we're talking about like legit life and death and not like flat earth stuff, um, it's a little frightening. It's maybe, maybe even dangerous. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I if I throw you into um, Adam, so we do one of those, uh, you know, mind swaps and I throw you into Adam Silver's body for a week, like, I don't see how this is fixable personally. Is there anything that you think the league could do to or the head of Instagram or the head of, <laughs> you know, I mean, it is like it, it's such a huge problem that's so much bigger even than, you know, a trillion dollar NBA organization. Like, well, how, do, how do we get around this shit? Well, I mean, on, on Wednesday here, the, you know, YouTube announced that it's banning all vaccine misinformation from the whole platform, you know, just to reduce the spread of, of this bullshit about immunizations, which, you know, these, these vaccines are 90% um, efficacy. So Adam Silver, who I'm hoping to speak to in the coming days, he can't come out here and pull an Obama or a Biden where it's like an executive order to say, you must do this. And, and I've, I've run some of these scenarios by the very frustrated medical officers of the NBA who are like, we're in a corner because the union won't let us. And, and I'm like, okay, but what if there's a Rudy Gobert incident? What if there's a completely preventable thing where you have a list of the unvaccinated dudes in the league and one of them comes into close contact and this spreads across the trainers, the staff, some old head ref or whatever, and they're like, yeah, well, that's the worst case scenario. I'm like, yeah, so what are you going to do? Like, then could Adam step in? Is like, they, they kind of, you know, want to admit that, yes, I mean, if it came to that, that then we would have, you know, the type of thing where Adam could just, you know, he had shut down the league for Rudy. Um, you know, we could we could change some stuff as the science evolves, they say. so. But they need the PR to be overwhelming. They need it to be that big of a story that everyone's going, what the fuck is happening here? For that sort of executive action. To but I'm, I'm surprised that they're even writing it out now this has come to such a boil. You know, I'm out here on like primetime cable news trying to, you know, answer the question of, okay, like, what are you going to do? What, are, what, how does, how does this thing end? And I'm telling you guys, I was like swinging my daughter at the playground yesterday on the like two phones with NBA sources, the league, the PA. I'm like, what is happening? What are you going to do? And they're like, well, we're going to educate and we're going to you know, keep, <laughs> sending, keep sending data and advocate. And, and I think the big thing that they're adding, other than depending on LeBron James to say the right thing, which I don't know, he said, it's not my job. It's not political, which is, of course, it's political. Of course, this is political. Um, but I think that the, the next piece for them is to make the lifestyles of the unvaccinated extraordinarily uncomfortable. Um, turn them basically into pariahs who can't do anything fun with their family, who can't swing their kids on the playground, right? Because they have to remain in this kind of hermetic seal to not get other people sick. Where if you're basically in this hermetically sealed bubble, that's fine if you're like a, you know, if you're a 22 year old who likes to go to the club and, you know, hang out in the weight room with an OG on the team, like maybe that convinces you to, you know, see your better angels or whatever. But if I'm a veteran who, flies private anyway and not with the team, stays in my own, you know, compound or house on the road anyway. I'm not sure that the NBA kind of forcing you into a corner is going to work. I'm not sure that LeBron is going to convince some guy who's stuck in his ways, who uh, doesn't need to worry about missing money or being told what to do. And, and I think that's why Kyrie, I don't mean to keep harping on him just because I spent two years kind of inside his head for this book, but he's going to become the test of whether this thing is going to hold out. And I think if he shuts up, um, not, you know, shut up and dribble, but like if he stops his kind of moral crusade here, then this might go away. I think that's kind of what the NBA is hoping, right? That this goes away and people stay safe. Mm -hmm. We talk about Adam Silver, uh, what they're going to, what he's going to do. We talk about what the NBA is going to do. 
What is Kyrie going to do now that YouTube is deleting page 34 of YouTube searches and not and, and, get, <laughs> and getting rid of all of the bullshit? What will he do when he's stuck in his room? You know what I'm saying? He's used to it, guys. Like, this is a guy who has disappeared on his team. You know, it rankled certain guys on the Celtics that he would take like a personal day, but then he would take another personal day. And he's been very upfront about his mental health and needing time and this being a day job and how entertainers are not appreciated as human beings. And not like, I'm, I'm with all of that, but like he disappeared on the nets in late 2019, early 2020, because he had a shoulder injury and was just doing his own thing. And like people like his coach didn't know where the hell he was, um, even though he's on an injured list or whatever, but like he, he's used to disappearing. And so I'm not sure that if he's skipping games or being outside the arena or like watching from home, like if that's really anything new to Kyrie Irving, who is kind of used to doing this vanishing act on his own terms and used to franchises and the league going along with it. And I do think that the Nets, while maybe are frustrated at the top or have been with similar things to this recently, last season's kind of disappearing act. Um, I, I don't think there's anything new for the Nets and they signed up for him, right? Like they signed up for the big personality. They signed up for another one with Harden. Um, and so I think they've, from what I understand, done a pretty good job of convincing KD and, and James to, um, to get with the Vax. And, and I think if they can lean on them to lean on Kyrie, then management doesn't have to get too involved or roll their eyes at another disappearing. All right. So Matt, I'm um, going back to what you said a couple minutes ago about how, you know, you think that this is a political issue. Um, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that. I do think it's a public health issue that has been politicized. I do think of course, you know, the right's on one side of this for the most part, the left's on one side of this for the other uh, most part as well. So just wonder if you could give me some more insight into why you think this is specifically a political issue. I agree with you that it's a public health issue that has been politicized. I don't think it needs to be political. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everything is kind of split into lefts and right these days. And and I think there's also maybe a a racial aspect that I probably don't understand the full extent of. There's a athlete aspect that, you know, this is precious bodies and these guys, you know, have millions of dollars and their well being and their families riding on their health. So I don't, I don't presume to understand all the calculations therein, but I do think it's just kind of interesting how LeBron as this kind of ultimate influencer of the entire culture and and who blocks and tackles for certain players, but also really just like there's a domino effect with all of his big decisions on uh, political societal issues like this. And like, I just spent a lot of time on this in my book, like LeBron and his team were there wearing hoodies in solidarity with Trayvon. It's crazy. It's almost 10 years ago, but then, you know, the mother of Tamir Rice is like, well, where was he when my son died miles from the arena? You know, uh, I went through in my book with this whole saga of after the Daryl Morey tweet in China and stand with Hong Kong and all that. LeBron's like, okay, I don't want to, I don't know anything about foreign policy. I'm not educated enough. That's always his line, which is cool. Like it was complex foreign policy for me to understand too. I would argue that you could do your research pretty fast and figure it out. And he has a Nike deal and I don't, but um, you know, I think, it's a question of like whether we're close I, though. We're get, we're gonna we are gonna get you a Nike deal. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't for this shit, tight. dog. I'm left here <laughs> stack. <laughs> Good luck with that, though, my G. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'll just take another L on sneakers after this. <laughs> <laughs> like us uh, all, you feel uh, me? <laughs> but it's like you know uh, these personal decisions that have become a public health decision because it's not just personal. There are other people around you who are in danger because you are unvaccinated. And so to say I'm not educated enough or it's personal decision, like when we're talking about a public health crisis, there's like a difference between having an excuse, like I'm not educated enough and an abdication when you are LeBron James, when you are um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, right? And, and I don't know, is this going to be an issue that a societal issue that, you know, these ultimate influencers just, lay down and refuse to lead on. I I would be disappointed in the NBA, but maybe this is just a complex issue because of those complex factors behind the decision. I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes with these guys. LeBron's so meticulous and and he talks in circles sometimes. So you're not sure like, is he dodging this or does he actually feel this way? You talked about, I mean, well, you wrote about Kareem. You had like uh, some coach from Kareem um, in the article. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's well-respected historically um, by, you know, basically everybody do these players like these days care about what a Kareem thinks like he said some pretty direct oh, yeah. you know had some yeah, pretty direct shots 
you know, uh, with what he was, as far as what he was saying, did, did, were they, you think they were affected or maybe anybody swayed by what he said? I, I, I feel like Kareem in particular may have kind of graduated into this like authorial chin scratching figure. Like you guys watch Dave on FX. There's an episode where like Kareem, like he, Dave doesn't realize he's about to get like an article written about him by Kareem and just like, totally. right. Right. Um, but like some of like Bill Russell, right? Like, in my book, there's a scene where Kyrie is sitting down listening to Bill Russell. Zach Levine's sitting around the campfire in some secret gym. And they're listening to Bill Russell g- give him advice. But uh, as Jamal Crawford was reminding me of that scene, like these guys are pushing back too. It's like, you know, we've had enough of some of this stuff. We're going to stand up for what we believe in that isn't necessarily just joining the good fight for the sake of it. Um, we're not just going to retweet. We're going to do action. And yet here I am seeing these guys equivocate on this stuff. And I don't know, like, where is the Kareem of today? You know, Jalen Brown strikes me as like that kind of guy who could, who could take up that mantle, but I I don't think he wants to fight this fight either. And so that's why it's just an imperfect issue in terms of uh, our kind of intellectuals of the league. Jalen Brown is so young and he's not like Kareem is God tier, like in basketball and just happens to be, you know, so fucking smart. You know what I mean? So, but like Brad Beal, smart. Mantle. Brad Beal is what? smart. He's at, Brad Beal is out here leading yeah. protests in the streets with Natasha Cloud, and now she needs this like at like at him on Twitter saying like, "Yo, you are dead ass wrong." So right, I, right, it's just right. hard for these guys yeah. to be intellectual leaders on everything. But Kareem did spell it out pretty clearly that like, yeah. you know, you are you are not living. It was pretty clear. Ball. Oh, yeah. It was more than clear. Good. Y'all looking real <laughs> stupid out here. You feel what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> in the Kareem way, of course. You know what I mean? Much more eloquent about it, but. Yeah, we'll I, see. Wait, wait, I, you, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if there's another Kareem out there right now. Yeah, I mean, I, and th- I mean, those quotes were like, I, I'm sure you, I'm sure you were fist pumping like a fucking maniac when, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you get, because it's like, that, those quotes are the hot knife through all the butter, right? It's just yeah. like, and we 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 uh, we spent basically our whole last episode um, talking about your article, and that's what we said. It's like there's all this nuance, right? There's you mentioned in the story, like um, LeBron is always thinking about being a leader of the black community, and you mentioned in the story, like black people are the least vaccinated racial subgroup in America. So he's absolutely thinking about that. There's all this context on trusting the system, not trusting the system, um, labor. But, uh, but, but I also think like the CDC says that, but then like the Washington Post poll says that um, that black identifying demographic also says that they're the least likely to get the shot, like kind of unconvincible. And so maybe LeBron's people look at that and say, yo, this is my ultimate demo. This is, these are people buying my sneakers and buying my jerseys and trust That's, me. So, so, so I'm to prod that and tell them what to do. Someone texted me in response to our article like LeBron is doing a Republicans buy sneakers too. And I said, actually, that's not what he's doing. Like, like this is not Republicans buy sneakers too. This is my people buy sneakers. <laughs> like, oh, I'm, so I'm aligned so with my people. Shot. It's like, yeah, yeah, there's not like a, there's not an opposite. <laughs> there's not an opposite aisle thing. But, but what I was saying was there's all that, there's all the context and nuance or whatever around the issue. And then there's Kareem just saying, yeah, we have to get the fucking vaccine. Don't be an idiot. You know what I mean? Like those quotes were sort of the like, um, I kind of needed that, I think, because when you wade into all the back and forth on this stuff societally and in the NBA and in your article, it's valuable to have that one leader to just say, yeah, you what know are we talking thought, about? You know who I thought was great was was Dame, who was like, and I was trying to talk to Dame to be that kind of adult in the room and our, uh, our schedules didn't work out for annoying reasons on my end. But, um, you know, Dame said in media day, like, you know, yeah, I got the shot. Like, uh, I got to protect my family. I got flu shots when I was a kid. I didn't know what the hell that was. I still can't explain, like, the research behind the flu shot. And this is saving lives, which I thought was, like, a very practical answer as just, like, not him not being a medical expert nor claiming he could be one. Like, yeah, he's got a very pristine body and he's around medical experts and sports scientists all day. But I think... I don't know. You guys are out here on NBA Twitter a lot more than I do engaging, but like you ever see how hoopers when they get at it with fans, like the KDs of the world, they're like, yo, you don't know shit about hooping. Like you, you maxed out in JV and like, okay, but then how all of a sudden are these guys experts in medical science? Like you maxed out of one year out of Duke, you know, like you don't know shit about (laughs) science. 
So to claim like this research, I'm researching it, I don't know enough, is ultimately like a cop out that I, I question as like a serious journalist. Like, are you basically just saying, no, I'm not vaccinated by saying I'm doing my research? Like, it seems like a cop out of people who claim to be a know-it-alls and really are being potentially failed role, role models, as Kareem says. I think Kyrie's problem is that he went to Duke. You know, so, so, like so, did, so did I. So you're not going to get me on that. <laughs> and I'm a Duke <laughs> fan, but I think <laughs> I think that's 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 part of his problem. But. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I I think a bigger part of of that problem is that you know during the last five years or so, you know, during the whole you know how the country got split apart with the whole Trump mm-hmm. shit, it's it's been this whole movement of you know respecting everyone's right to their opinion. And I think we've progressed to the point where we do not, we put experts' opinions on the same level with dudes who don't know shit. You know what I mean? Like, like, bro, a scientist knows more about science than you. A doctor knows more about health than you. A fucking mechanic knows more about cars than you. A farmer knows more about agriculture than you. You know what I mean? So, like, like, I think that that we've arrived at the point from where we wanted to hear everyone out during the whole, you know, the vocal minority shit during the Trump shit. I think that's all snowballed into into this shit now, where 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 a lot of people do not view the the opinions and the assertions of experts as holding weight yeah i mean i i'm just scared of reach i totally agree with all that i'm i'm just scared of arriving at the moment where whatever Kyrie does next if it is kind of a, an extreme moral crusade masked by his interpretation of the facts of uh, a pandemic is he is Kyrie getting us to the it's okay to drink bleach moment and and mm-hmm. and embodying some of that, um, you know, that following, but amongst kids, impressionable kids. This isn't right wingers who are reading Breitbart all day. These are people who are like, oh, maybe I shouldn't get the vaccine to go back to school. Or mom, why? Like grandma, why are you getting? You know, it's just like it's a misinformation campaign among people who need to hear real information. And uh, honestly, I think the most important person in, in this whole crisis right now is Kevin Durant, just like telling his buddy to suck it up. Well, and you, it's um, I agree with your concern around that. And I thought it was a great decision to close the story with the um, the anecdote of him visiting the reservation. And, you know, we were talking about racial subgroups. American Indians are the most vaccinated racial subgroup in the country, specifically because of how devastated the reservations um, were by the virus. And I, I thought that was sort of the ultimate indictment. Um, and, you know, you didn't, t- you didn't write a hit piece. You wrote a very good, fair sort of look at w- exactly what's going on. But that was, to me, that was the part that hit me the hardest was, yeah, man, like I've read quite a bit about what's been going on. And the fact that he went to one of those places and said, well, your actual reality doesn't matter to me um, because I have these opinions was, uh, was kind of, Shocking. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Ky- Kyrie does a lot of good stuff. You know, his, his aunt who kind of went off on some of these, uh, she just went off and I just kind of listened bro, for a while. When she dropped that, when she dropped that Dr. Falsy bomb, Dr. where were you Falsy, at? Dr. Falsy, I'm like, what, I mean, what's I, going I, your I mind on that one, bro? Her. I want to interrupt her and just like start dropping science on her, but whatever. I, I let her, like Jonathan Isaac, just kind of go off the deep end on their own. But, um, you know, I, 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 I think Kyrie and his aunt have done a lot of good for the world. Um, it's just like, it's always been Kai's problem. Like he can't message the good. He can only message the out there. And he goes off on these wild tangents. And maybe in some ways he's trying to remain quiet right now. So he doesn't go off on one of those things. I think he needs to stay on message. It's why instead of doing media day last year, he wanted to release some press statement of his own or do stuff on his own platform or host these weird IG live Q and A's with KD while sitting with incense in his like behind his Basquiat style paintings of his own creation. And I wonder if he'll come back a little more on message and honestly, maybe a little more locked in. I mean, we don't know what this grand plan is. It may just be like, he's going to get the shot. He needs some time to inoculate. He's going to get back on the court. It's going to be fine. And then that's going to win the championship. That could very well be the plan. And Kyrie will say on message. I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves to say, well, he's going to quit the whole season and he's going to lose $8.9 million because the league put out this threatening statement. I don't think anybody other than like a couple guys on the Nets and the GM really know what the hell's going on. here. You talked about Jonathan Isaac. He said he was misrepresented. Um, how, how, do you, how do you feel about that statement? I think on Media Day he said that. 
People um, always say they're misrepresented when they end up looking of, fucking stupid of with course. something they say. And then came with a very, <laughs> you know, buttoned up PR, you know, uh, um, statement. I, how, I, how do you I feel about know. that? I think, I think Jonathan is a very um, well-spoken guy. It didn't surprise me that he had um, a, a, a defense of that. I mean, I think he also said that his tweet that he put out there saying true journalism is dead exclamation mark like more to come period which doesn't make sense because when you say period and then you say more to come that doesn't really make sense uh, <laughs> but, a little but, jab there to, you feel me? to be continued it. the end i respect the pettiness you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> but like he, he, he's he's entitled to defend himself um and, and he's entitled to opinion i i really just his part of the story in particular i just tried to let it breathe for himself you know i i couldn't mm-hmm quote stack quote on on top of quote to describe his kind of back and forth thinking of like okay he was watching donald trump press conferences he was looking into stuff about the likes of tuskegee he was starting to distrust fauci on by watching these press conferences in quarantine i mean he's kind of questioning that stuff saying like i did not Mm -hmm. come to my conclusion from watching donald trump which is not what i say at all i'm just kind of walking through his thought process which i mean you know I, i went back over the tape and the transcript and you know, he just, that's how he laid it out there. I was, I was shocked when he's like saying that, you know, vaccinated people have to wear masks some places, but then they don't wear it others. Like, why do you have to wear masks? It's like, dude, if you don't understand by now why people need to wear masks, like you are not doing any research and he's claiming to do research, to come to his decision. And look, he's a man of God. He is entitled to his religious freedom. That's fine. This, this was for balance. I was not trying to come out here and get him. I just, he struck me as a contrarian person based on standing up for the national anthem without his t-shirt on and so i got you know i gave him a call and he wanted to talk about it and i think that's the thing certain people are very um you know strong in their convictions and and they're the people who are going to want to speak out on what's a thorny issue that if i had that nike deal that you guys are getting me you know i might i might be a little careful about it too (laughs) um i I do think contrarianism is at the root of a lot of issues Mm, mm. um i think that a lot of people think that you know, being a contrarian is how they display their intelligence to people. Um, you, I mean, you take a look at Kyrie, right? Kyrie was was anti bubble at first, right? He was he was like, okay, the, you know, it's, it's not safe to do all this. It's not safe to you know be be, con- be confined and, and play basketball. Now he doesn't give a shit about safety measures, right? Because that's because because he's moving away from the tide of that now. So, um, you know, with 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 that being said, like, have you gotten any information from from guys from your sources? about how a lot of people just kind of view these guys as just contrarians like blowing hot air or, or, or do people kind of, you know, think that these, these guys are really fighting on, on a principle here? I, I think it was really interesting as I tried to kind of reconstruct that call that Kyrie, you know, uh, had with a bunch of players where I think ESPN called him the disruptor and, and he was trying to gather as many people as possible. And there were the practical folks like uh, Chris Paul, you know, the kind of, politicians of the nba on one side and then there's the contrarian side who were, were on kind of team kai right you got avery bradley dwight howard who was pointed out to me was never into these political issues until last summer dwight howard who the other day said i changed my mind because of hipaa and i think <laughs> the reporter was like okay that's not how hipaa works but whatever, <laughs> which i love um i love follow-up questions like that as long as they're not from david letterman um but <laughs> I, I, I do agree with you that there is this contrarian to be contrarian crowd that that does mimic America as the NBA so often does. And I thought that was the ultimate kind of cauldron of that was like the guys who were boycotting the bubble to be you know, fighting the good fight, certainly, but to be rebellious. And then like Mello and some other kind of OG centrists almost on that call were like, okay, like, great. But like, what are we going to do outside the bubble? Like, are you actually going to go like pull a Jalen Brown and like, drive to a protest and lead it and like call out people? Or are you going to like do your Kyrie thing behind the scenes here? Like, you know, like Kyrie could have gone to the bubble and still bought a house for the family of George Floyd. Right. So, so I think it's that kind of like, how do you unify the contrarians and the prag- pragmatists in the middle? And I've talked to Andre Iguodala about this a lot. Cause I think he, he knows how to thread the needle as like this players union guy, but he's also, I think he was saying to me, like, for my book, like you can't be, I can't be militant all the time. Like he wanted to, to boycott Donald Sterling and the fucking playoffs and all that when the Warriors were playing the Clippers back in the day. And at the same time, he's like, we need the generational wealth and, and the platform to go to the bubble and say, we can make this money. And so I don't know if Kyrie is, is gotten anywhere closer to the middle so much as further to his own extreme left, if you will, even though 
it's kind of a conservative uh, conspiracy. There's a lot of shit meeting around on the back end with the conspiracy yeah, theories. In, yes. in space, in space, yes. Uh, Matt Sullivan, thank you so much for joining us um, again. Uh, great job on the, the the Rolling Stone piece. Look forward to seeing more uh, basketball stuff from you. And uh, grab Matt's book if you don't have it already. And thanks for coming on the show, man. We really appreciate it. Appreciate sure. you guys. This is really interesting. Much more interesting than uh, five minutes on CNN. <laughs> I had to flex on us right quick. But that's a, uh, that's a flex. That's it. a heavy flex, though. We yeah. respect that. For sure. Appreciate you, bro. Much love, right, guys. Keep fighting the good fight. Peace. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Peace.